Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to District Court. We are here this morning in the matter of State of Utah v. Jody Hildebrandt, case 23150-1763. Mr. Clark and Mr. Shum are here representing the State of Utah, and Mr. Terry is here with Ms. Hildebrandt. We are scheduled for a waiver of preliminary hearing. Mr. Terry, Pierce, you uh, have just handed the court a signed plea agreement. That is correct, Your Honor. Uh, with respect to the waiver, Ms. Hilda Brandt, we have had discussions. She fully understands the purpose of a preliminary hearing, what the burden of proof would be, um, and that she has the right to a preliminary hearing. But in conjunction with the entry of her plea today, we waive the preliminary hearing. And in fact, there is a provision in the written plea agreement that uh, operates as a waiver of That's the correct. preliminary hearing. All right. Ms. Hildebrandt, I've been handed a written document, a plea agreement with your signature on it. Did you sign that document? Yes. And you did that to represent to the court that you have read the document carefully, that you understand what you've read, that you agree to all of the terms that are set forth in that written document? Yes, sir. You've had sufficient time to ask Mr. Terry any questions that you have about the agreement or its potential effect? Yes. Is anyone pressuring you to enter into this agreement or is anyone promising you anything that I haven't been told about or that is not in the written document? No. 
Are you under the influence of alcohol or drugs today? No. Is there anything today that could interfere in any way with your ability to understand the, the agreement its, or its potential consequences? No. No physical condition, mental health or emotional condition, nothing that could interfere with your present ability to evaluate the agreement and decide if it's what you're prepared to do today? No. You don't need more time. You're ready to go. Yes. Any further record, counsel? Your Honor, the agreement contains a factual basis. Um, there are a few details in the factual basis that we are not in full agreement with. However, this is a guilty plea. It is not an Alford plea. The factual basis set forth, sets forth facts that uh, we agree with, uh, that Ms. Hildebrand agrees with, that are sufficient for the court to accept her plea with respect to the four counts uh, to which she is pleading guilty. And so we ask the court to accept her plea agreement. And apart from what is in the written factual base in the plea agreement, you have, I'm assuming, re reviewed voluminous discovery. You, we have. you don't dispute whether there is an actual or an ad adequate factual basis. We do not. All right, then. Anything else before the court receives Ms. Hildebrandt's pleas? No, Your Honor. Nothing for the state, Your Honor. Then, Ms. Hildebrandt, how do you plead to count one, aggravated child abuse, a second-degree felony? Guilty. And to count three, aggravated child abuse, a second-degree felony? Guilty. To count five, aggravated child abuse, a second-degree felony? Guilty. And to count six, also aggravated child abuse, a second-degree felony? Guilty. The court finds that there is a sufficient factual basis. The court, in addition, finds that Ms. Hildebrandt's pleas are made knowingly and voluntarily. The court, therefore, accepts and enters those pleas, dismisses the remaining two counts. We are anticipating a PSI, although part of the plea agreement appears to be that Ms. Hildebrandt will not contest a prison sentence. Correct. Is that right? That is correct. But we... We are, we are asking for a PSI. All right. Then the court orders the preparation of a pre-sentence investigation report and sets sentencing at 10.30 a.m. on February 20th. Anything else for today, counsel? Nothing from us, Your Honor. Nothing from us, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. We'll be in recess. Thank you, Your Honor.